my name is Angela Owandu. I work with an organization called Avocats and Frontiers France, Translated Lawyers Without Borders France in Nigeria. So we basically in, in Avocats and Frontiers France in Nigeria, we are working on issues bordering on torture by security agencies and the death penalty. When it has to do with torture, one of the first things I have to say is that torture is prevalent in Nigeria and it's commonly used by security agencies as a form of punishment and also uh, usually to obtain confessional statements from suspects. Now, it is very systematic, it happens every day and it's very problematic in the criminal justice system in Nigeria. On the other hand, the death penalty, which is closely related to the issue of torture, is, 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 also very, is also very much a problem because Nigeria is one of the countries in Africa and indeed in the world that still continues to practice the death penalty. And as a matter of fact, in, 20, in 2016, some executions occurred in Edo State in Nigeria. So the, the death penalty is still very much in use in Nigeria and in fact, a report was released saying that uh, Nigeria in 2017 handed, handed down the most number of uh, death sentences in sub-Saharan Africa. So that's to let you know the enormous uh, problem that we are facing with regards to the issue of torture. Uh, and when I say that it is closely related, we have to say that uh, one of the things that we do in, in Avocats and Frontiers France is to provide access to justice to, on the on one hand, to victims of torture, and then on the other hand, uh, we also provide access to justice to persons who are facing, facing uh, the death penalty, whether they have exhausted their option of appeal, whether they are awaiting trial for an offense punishable by death. But one thing that uh, I must say that we have observed in Avocats and Frontiers France in Nigeria is that there is a correlation between the issue of torture and the death penalty. And this is because in the course of providing free legal services to persons who are facing the death penalty in Nigeria, we have come to observe the majority, uh, a good number of our, of our clients, were actually subjected to torture by, by security agencies, especially at the point of interrogation. Now, this, this, this is a huge problem because persons who go through the criminal justice system in Nigeria are most likely to be subjected to torture. And I, it happens almost in every detention center. The, the, one of the major problems with torture is, of course, torture is illegal, as we know, but under international human rights law, and in fact, under Ni the Nigerian national law, it's prohibited by the Constitution. However, in practice, there is a huge level of impunity an unbelievably level of impunity as regards the issue of torture. It happens every day, especially in police stations and indeed by others, used by other security agencies. And there is no level of accountability. Nobody is held accountable. The perpetrators of torture go scot-free. They are not being held accountable for this action, which is illegal as we know it. So this is one of the things that we are doing in Avocats and Frontiers France. We have a team of lawyers working in various states where we ensure that victims go, do not go without a remedy so that victims are given a voice and on, on the platform of our project, we have been able to, uh, between 2009 and, and this, we have been able to provide free legal service well, 710 victims of torture across only five states in Nigeria. And, and it, it's important to mention that there are 36 states in Nigeria. So that's to let you know the, the level of impunity uh, with which uh, acts of torture uh, are carried out by security agencies without any form of accountability. The main factors that uh, enable the, 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 that, that enables people to continue to carry out torture is impunity. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, where there is lack of accountability in a system, that means that security agencies have a few days to go ahead to continue to carry out acts of illegality. 
Now, because they are not being held accountable, this makes it very possible. And in fact, this is the, so, the, the major reason why they, they continue to use torture, because they are not being held accountable. On the other hand, the part of the larger society, the populace, I would say that there is also a huge level of uh, um, misinformation on, on, where, on how you can stand up for your rights, even against security agencies. Uh, one, in the course of our work, one of the things that uh, I find really striking is that most times victims, uh, they are not unaware that they have been treated inhumanly, uh, but, but they, are, they, they simply do not know who to go to. They simply do not know that they have a cause of action against the perpetrators of torture. They do not know who to go to. They do not know how to begin to seek for a remedy. So these are some of the factors that contribute uh, to, to the high level of the incidence of torture in, in Nigeria. I would say that the situation has always been this way for a very long time. Uh, and that is why uh, we are working to ensure that uh, the situation is curbed, we to ensure that torture is stigmatized. It's been it's been that way for for a very long time, and and I would only say that changes are, are beginning to trickle in as a result of, of, of our action on, on on this subject. Yes, we carry out other in Avocas and Frontiers France. We carry out other actions apart from the free legal services that we provide to victims of human rights abuses. We also conduct trainings for stakeholders in the criminal justice system in Nigeria. So um, on one hand, what we do is that uh, we bring together judges, magistrates, lawyers, and um, we, we bring those from public prosecutors from the Ministry of Justice, prison officials, we bring them all together and we, we conduct trainings on the various issues that we're working on. One of the things that we try to do is to ensure, for example, on, on, on the issue of torture, we, we ensure that uh, the stakeholders understand the, prin the principles outlined in the United Nations Convention Against Torture, and also we look at other regional human rights instruments dealing on the issue of torture and, and national instruments. For example, the Nigerian Constitution in Section 34 prohibits torture, we have the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, and these are all instruments that do not only prohibit torture, but also provides for remedies for victims. And then uh, we have also had uh, one of the other things that we do, apart from trainings, is that we conduct roundtables, uh, engage engagement with stakeholders. We also uh, provide, uh, we, we engage in legislative advocacy. And one of the uh, huge successes we've had is that in, in, at, at the end of 2017, after a protracted uh, period of time, a legislation was passed, uh, actually signed into law by the president in December 2017, criminalizing torture, and it's called the Anti-Torture Act. Now, it's, it's, it, it was on at the National Assembly for a very long time, but in December, that law was signed, criminalizing torture. So these are some of the things we do. We, we provide legal services, we conduct trainings, uh, and then we engage also in, in advocacy and, and we also awareness conferences to ensure that people become uh, more and more aware of not only their rights, but what they can do, uh, what, what are their entitlements, what does the law say uh, would be the remedy, and how can they go about assessing this remedy. So these are some of the things that we do. In well, because the, the kind of issues that we work on, the, the main constraints that, that we face, uh, in, that I face in my work in Avocat and Frontest France, is um, relate, we, we, in relation to uh, working on uh, human rights, is really uh, the, the, first of all, I would say that the issues that we are working on are uh, very sensitive issues. Now you, you're, you're trying to hold security agencies accountable. Uh, you're working on the issues of death penalty, which is very accountable, which is very sensitive. And uh, we also have, a, a, very soon we're launching a project on extrajudicial killings. These are very sensitive issues. So of course you have concerns of security. Uh, we, we also, uh, one of the other challenges that we have uh, would be 
concerns on the part of the victims that we are working uh, for to ensure that we avoid things like rep reprisal, uh, because that's, that's a huge concern on the, on the part of the victims that we are working for. So the, the case, uh, one of the cases that we have worked on in Avocat and Frontiers France is uh, uh, the case of Maimuna Abdumumuni. Now Maimuna is a young woman in Katsina State in Nigeria who was alert to uh, have killed her husband at the age of 13. So she was arrested obviously at the age of 13 and let go by the police. So they waited until she was above 18 years. She was rearrested, tried, convicted, and sentenced to death. For an offense, she was alleged to have committed as a minor. Now, the interesting thing is that by the time the police rearrested Maimuna and at the time she was sent to, um, to death, she had remarried and she had a young baby who was only a few months old. Now, Maimuna, when we identified her case in, Kat in Katsina prisons, she had uh, this young baby with her on death row. And it was very clear that uh, Maimuna's case had infringed upon very clear um, principle sets set out under international human rights law. And her case was taken to the ECOWAS court by Avocat and Fontes France, where after listening to uh, the arguments on both sides, the, the, uh, the court, the honorable court held that uh, the Nigerian government had indeed uh, breached the rights of, uh, of the young child, uh, Memula. And one of the bones of contention in that case was, of course, uh, the, the time at which she, she committed the offense. So even though the police had waited until she was above 18 uh, to, to, to have tried and convicted and sentenced her to death, it's very clear on that, uh, well, not only international law, but also legal principles that the material time for any given offense is the time uh, at which the, the alleged offense took place. So in this instance, um, Maimuna's case obviously raises a lot of issues. It, bothers, uh, it, it touches on early first marriage. It, it touches on uh, the treatment of minors as regards uh, the issue of the death penalty. It, it touches on uh, the issue of young women, women in prisons, and children in, in, in prisons. So uh, th this is one interesting case that, that we worked on that uh, actually uh, we took to, to the regional level. Now, on one hand, the ECOWAS court uh, not only declared that the Nigerian government had infringed the, 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 the rights of Maimuna, but also uh, declared that uh, the death penalty should not have been uh, applied to her because she was a minor at the time uh, of the alleged offense, but also uh, made clear statements that uh, awarded five million naira damages against uh, the Nigerian government for infringement of Maimuna's rights. Then on the other hand, uh, on the appeal level at the national level, uh, Maimuna's case was also, uh, the death sentence of Maimuna was also obtained on appeal. Now, so that this is one, one, the example of uh, one of the cases that we handled uh, in Avocat and Frontiers France. The measures that should be taken, uh, put in place to improve human rights uh, respect and also protection in this situation is, uh, first of all, uh, there's been an anti-torture act that has been passed, uh, which is a very new legislation in Nigeria. And I, I think one of the first steps is on the issue of torture is for all stakeholders to take advantage of this, this legislation. Uh, just last month, I, I traveled around the various states where we work to monitor the, the, the work that's been done on the field. And during the interaction with stakeholders, it was very clear that uh, uh, between December 2017 and November 20, 2018, not a single person, not a single perpetrator of torture has been charged under this new legislation. So this is, um, one of the first things that will go to holding perpetrators of torture accountable. And here we are looking at purely as security agencies as, uh, as fits the definition given by the United Nations uh, Convention Against Torture in Article 1. So uh, one way that torture can be curbed in Nigeria is accountability. Once we begin to hold perpetrators of torture accountable, then we'll begin to see changes we we'll begin to see changes in the system. Then also victims will feel free to come forward to enforce their rights against perpetrators. Lawyers 
will also be emboldened to begin to raise this issue beyond what we call uh, in Nigeria, be beyond the uh, trial within trial, which is provided by the, uh, the, the Evidence Act. So uh, this is one key way. And then on the other hand, with regards to the death penalty, uh, there's a, a global move uh, away from the death penalty. And, and so for, for Nigeria, one of the first steps will be to put in place an official moratorium against the death penalty to at least begin to um, have some time to begin to reform the various legislations that we have uh, in Nigeria that prescribe the death penalty and uh, especially the mandatory nature of the death penalty in Nigeria.